So today we're going to be talking about the chameleon-like effects of a narcissist. A narcissist is somebody who is not going to have the same moral code or cognitive dissonance that you might experience if you lie or if you cheat or if you hurt someone's feelings. Someone who is somewhat healthy gets uncomfortable when they lie. They get uncomfortable with hurting someone's feelings. They don't feel comfortable in their skin when they know that they've acted inappropriately. So we're talking about empathy. When we have empathy for others, that is like a safety mechanism for humanity. We don't want to hurt people because we understand what it feels like to be hurt. And so we have this feeling, this emotional response when we think about our actions hurting someone else. And that's a beautiful thing. When we are thinking about narcissists, we have to understand clearly that they don't experience the world quite that way. It doesn't mean they have zero empathy. They have empathy for themselves. They may even understand how you're feeling, but they won't have the emotional response, this safety mechanism that healthier people have that would deter them from wanting to hurt someone. Narcissists are exploitive. They generally want something. You are a means to an end. And if you are like me, you have either experienced people who have exploited your wounds for their own gain, or maybe you love someone. Maybe your son has been exploited by a narcissist or your daughter. I get letters like this every day from parents who are struggling with the idea that their son has been exploited by a female narcissist who has lied from the beginning and who has created a narrative and a story that the son believed in. And now the son is locked away in a different country or has, been, has moved to another side of the world, away from family and friends that could offer any type of support because the female narcissist created a narrative that the son believed in. Generally that the female was someone that the son or the man in the relationship could trust and rely on. And over time, debilitated the son's self-esteem, beat him down, accused him of being gay, accused him of being selfish, accused him of having an addiction to gaming, whatever it was, just beat him down, beat his self-esteem down, got him to believe in this negative narrative about himself. And at the same time then, assures and secures this idea that the narcissist stays in control over the relationship. I get letters like this every day from parents who are trying to make sense out of how did this happen? How did I, how did I raise a daughter or a son who I knew may have had some insecurity issues or confidence issues how could they have been so manipulated by a narcissist? And how do I deal with not having any contact with my son or my daughter as a result of this narcissistic relationship? And so usually what I do if I coach a parent like this, I break everything down for them so at least they can understand what happened so that they can understand the narcissist as a chameleon and understand the motives of a narcissist and the mechanisms that are making this relationship be between the narcissist and their son or daughter so strong. So step one is a narcissist figuring out who they know that has wounds that can be exploited. And generally speaking, people who walk around feeling lonely, who lack self-esteem, who lack self-confidence, 
who feel abandoned, who struggle with abandonment issues. Maybe they have an anxious attachment style. Maybe they just don't feel good enough. How many of us can relate to not feeling good enough? So a narcissist will gravitate towards someone who has a wound such as this, and they will exploit it. So they become the chameleon. They figure out what this soon-to-be victim needs, and they become it. In essence, they're becoming their Florence Nightingale. They're becoming their rescuer, so it seems. And so your son is online, looking online for a date, and maybe the narcissist reaches out to him. And a conversation starts. The narcissist will figure out what your son is struggling with. Is it loneliness? Is it abandonment? Does he have issues with his dad? Does he have issues with his mom? Has he been bullied in grammar school or high school? Did he quit college? Does he feel bad about quitting college? Does he play video games? Does he have a good job or is he struggling to find a good job? Does he have relationship issues with his siblings or his friends? The unsuspecting victim does not understand that the narcissist is prodding for information. She's trying to figure out where his boo-boos are. And very carefully, she will begin to create a story that this young man will believe in. And this young man who's struggling with attachment trauma or low self-esteem or whatever begins to see the narcissist as a savior as a caretaker. This narcissist becomes the go-to person for this young man or this young woman. This is how it would start online in a dating situation. Before long, you would begin to notice that your son or your daughter doesn't want to talk to you so much anymore because now they've secured another person. They've secured another caretaker. They've secured a savior. And they're being really intoxicated by the love bombing of the narcissist. This is the chameleon-like effect of a narcissist. They know exactly what they're doing. And this is why I always said it's a criminal act. This is criminal. To lure an unsuspecting wounded victim into your lair for the purpose of gaslighting them, for the purpose of convincing them that they are inept, for the purpose of convincing them that they have a ton of emotional issues, renders the victim helpless to be able to stand on their own two feet. Because when your son or your daughter then confronts the narcissist and says, wait a minute, I don't think that's true about me, he or she will be persecuted by the narcissist. And what happens then is that the suffering that comes as a result of confronting someone who is gaslighting them, hence their, their savior, their rescuer, the punishment is so severe that what ends up happening is the son or the daughter that is experiencing this gaslighting by a narcissist has nowhere to go with these emotions. And unfortunately, they become internalized. I can relate to that very much. Because every time I confronted my ex-husband, I was told over and over again that I was crazy, that I was a negative person. And this is why I ended up with adult onset asthma. This is why I blew out my thyroid. It was so mind bending to think I had nowhere to go to with these feelings. And then every time I tried to express myself, I was told that I was basically nothing. In my situation, it was implied that my ex-husband saved me, that I needed him, he rescued me, and that if it wasn't for him, I would be nowhere, I'd be nothing. That even my own parents didn't like me, even my own parents didn't want me, and even my own father told him that he shouldn't marry me. Those were my wounds, those were my deepest, deepest wounds, and he exploited them. And on the surface, I bet you could find a lot of people that would agree with you that he was the nicest man in the world. But no one understood what was going on behind closed doors. So a narcissist is essentially a chameleon. 
And if your son or your daughter has been caught up in this type of a relationship, it is so difficult to stand by and watch. If you know what narcissism is, if you know what projection is, if you know what gaslighting is, it can render you physically ill knowing that your child has, is being so emotionally and psychologically abused by a narcissist whose agenda it is to exploit your child. So a narcissist will walk into your child's life and do what they can to isolate you from them, from your child. The narcissist will walk into your son's life and walk into your daughter's life pretending to be their savior. They lift them up. They love bond them. They laugh at their jokes. They call when they say they're going to call. They end up being the absolute perfect partner when your child first meets them. Your child will fill with a sense of confidence that they've never experienced before. They will seem happy. They will begin to take care of themselves. You'll wonder, maybe this is the right relationship for them because they seem so happy. In time, your child will become short with you. They won't come to Sunday meals. They won't come to birthday parties. If they do show up, the narcissist will be very talkative, but your child might not be because you don't know that behind your back, the narcissist has been insinuating that you're not a good mother or that you're not a good father and that you should, they should love you anyway. In other words, they'll say things to your child like, well, you should love your mother anyway. You know, she did the best that she could, but I can see how damaged you are because of her mothering. You should love your father, even though he wasn't a good father, he did the best he could, but it's obvious that the way he treated you damaged you. Behind closed doors, the narcissist is gaslighting your child. The narcissist is finding as many ways as possible to get your child to lean on them. So your child will be lift up. Your child will be lifted up. Your child will be love bombed. Your child will feel seen perhaps in a way that he or she has never felt seen before. You will notice that your child is seems intoxicated, maybe even starts to take terrific care of himself or herself seems directed. It'll feel confusing for you. Like I said, you may even question yourself, like what's happening and behind closed doors, you will not know that this narcissist is gaslighting your child. This narcissist is finding ways to get your child to see them as their savior. And in the meantime, they are also doing what they can to isolate you from your child. They're doing what they can to isolate your child from his or her friends. They may want to move. They may even suggest that it was your child's idea to move. Meanwhile, it was all implanted by the narcissist. Well, maybe it's a good idea if you, that you got away from your parents a little bit, maybe that's what you need. You know, if you got away from your parents, I bet that's when they'd really appreciate you. They say you never know what you've got until it's gone. Your parents really don't appreciate you, do they? And in this very seductive language, your child will feel like they must listen to the narcissist because the narcissist of course made them feel good. The narcissist has created this bond with them, this dependency for this validation upon them. The wounds that they've carried, maybe even their whole life, low self-esteem, feelings of unworthiness, maybe even feelings of rejection and abandonment. The narcissist has, Slid, slid those wounds or covered those wounds over with the love bombing. Your child isn't going to want to lose that. So there's this fear now that if your child doesn't do what the narcissist wants them to do, then your child is going to lose that connection 
lose this sense of you see me, you can validate me, you love me, I am enough. Your child doesn't want to lose that. And so behind closed doors, the narcissist is stringing together a story that your child begins to believe. And you don't know what's going on. All you know is that your child is spending less time with you. Your child does not answer the phone. Your child is becoming short with you. Your child is rude with you. Your child is not making eye contact with you anymore. Your child begins to feel distant and aloof. Your child may exhibit signs of depression. Your child is rude. Your child's personality is changing. And all the while, the narcissist on their hand is smiling and acting like nothing's wrong. But they know exactly what they're doing. They're trying to separate you from your child so that they can essentially remain in power and control over your child. There's something that the narcissist wants. It could be money. It could just be to secure a body, to have a primary source of narcissistic supply, somebody to project all of their wounds onto, someone to punish and to persecute. That might be what the narcissist is looking for. Or it might be the narcissist may want to, I just read an email today from a woman who told me that she met someone who married her for a green card. And as soon as this man got everything that he wanted, he was sleeping with people that she knew. He emptied out her bank account. He opened up credit cards in his name. And she did what a lot of people do. She pulled away from her family. When her mother and father asked her what was going on in her life, she didn't tell them. She withheld information. The narcissist that she was with said, your parents are going to reject me because I come from a different country. And I don't want to deal with that with your family members. So the narcissist went ahead and created this story that the victim of narcissistic abuse believed in that, but she wasn't aware that he was projecting. He didn't trust that the parents were going to trust him and that his intentions were pure. And so he projected that out into the universe and blamed the parents for not accepting him. And that was not the case, but what ends up happening when you're a victim of narcissistic abuse and this type of psychological manipulation is that you begin to believe the story the narcissist is telling you. In her case, she did not know that his intention was to come to America. He did not know that she did not know that. And so when he began to listen to her stories while they spent a year apart, she felt seen. She couldn't wait till he called her, wait till he texted her because whenever he did, he was mirroring back a sense of, I see you. I love you. You're enough. I'll take care of you. I'll protect you. I'll never let anyone hurt you. And she believed that this person was basically her rescuer, her savior. And yet she didn't realize that she had been marked that she was his ticket to get to America. And in all of this, she was being isolated by her, from her family, emotionally isolated, psychologically isolated, and ultimately physically isolated. He was finding ways, even though he wasn't even in the country yet, finding ways to make her feel like she shouldn't trust her family, implanting these ideas in her head that you know, this, it's very likely your dad isn't going to like me. Well, what's going to happen if your dad doesn't like me? I hope you choose me if your dad doesn't like me. What's the plan if your dad doesn't like me? No one said her dad didn't like her, like him. Dad wasn't even given a chance to like him. And yet his daughter is being emotionally, psychologically manipulated by someone who had an agenda, who was exploiting her emotions and even exploiting her status as an American, all while her family stood by and watched her get deeper and deeper and deeper into a narcissistic relationship 
which ultimately ended in a marriage and ended in him leaving once he got what he wanted after racking up credit card bills and after sleeping with a number of women that she knew. When you're dealing with a narcissist that is layering these stories is that you don't realize that as the victim, you're becoming more and more and more dependent upon the narcissist. When you have a child that's being manipulated by a narcissist, what you're witnessing on the outside is a dependency happen. You're witnessing your child grow more and more dependent upon the narcissist for everything. Behind closed doors, the narcissist is insinuating that there's something wrong with your child. You know, she does it with a smile on her face. He does it with a smile on his face. But nonetheless, the narcissist is convincing your child that there's something wrong with him or there's something wrong with her. They may suggest that your child has some type of an eating disorder and that's why they're overweight even if they're not overweight. They might suggest that your child has a gaming addiction even though your child plays video games once in a while. They may suggest that your child has a drinking problem, that they're an alcoholic even though they rarely drink. They might suggest that they have some emotional problems because they have such a dysfunctional family and they should really go into therapy because they need help with that. A narcissist was, is like somebody who carries a bow and arrow with them. You know, it's impossible to shoot a, an arrow towards yourself. You can only shoot an arrow forward. And so when you think about a narcissist, think about someone who's always carrying a bow and arrow. They're always going to pull that bow back. They're always going to release it. And they're always going to shoot the guilt and the shame your way. There's absolutely zero accountability. But what's happening with the gaslighting over time is that your child is being methodically brainwashed to believe that there's something wrong with them, which increases the dependency on the narcissist. And so what you'll see is you will see in the beginning, your child will be excited, exuberant, and you'll wonder, oh, maybe this is a really great thing. And then over time, you'll hear less from your child. And eventually what you'll notice is that your child is turning into themselves. You may even show signs of depression. Your child will only come to your house if you force them to come to your house. When your child is there, they'll be irritable. Even though the narcissist might be the happiest person in the room because they know they've got your child wrapped around their finger. They're, ex they're exploiting your child and they know exactly what they're doing. And you won't, you might not realize that there's this emotional implosion happening. Like your child is emotionally imploding because your child has learned that if they question the narcissist, there's hell to pay. So if your child questions the narcissist and says, you know, why did you open up that second credit card? We're trying to pay off this original credit card. The narcissist will suggest that your child is paranoid, that your child doesn't trust them. How dare the, the, your child doubt the intentions of the narcissist? And because the narcissist has done such a great job at convincing your child that there's something wrong with them because they come from such a dysfunctional family, your child will implode mentally and emotionally and think, oh my God, how could I have ever questioned my savior? How could I have ever questioned my wife? How could I have ever questioned my husband? How could I have ever questioned this person who's been nothing but there for me? Your child will hear over and over and over and over and over. I'm the one who's there for you. I'm the one who does everything for you. I'm the one who takes care of you. I'm the one who listens to you. I'm the one who hears you complain. I'm the one who feeds you. I'm the one, I'm the one, I'm the one, I'm the one. And your child will be incapacitated by the ability to stand up for themselves. And every time your child tries to open his or her mouth, they will be punished. 
they will be persecuted. And that is why when you see your child at your home after a month or two months, six months, a year, two years, three years, my heart breaks for you if you're a parent whose child has been um, manipulated and exploited by a narcissist or a sociopath or a psychopath who is helpless. You know, like I said, I receive letters like this every day. Lisa, what am I going to do? My son married a psychopath. My daughter married a narcissist and I have no contact with my grandchildren. I not allowed over the house. Another thing that you'll notice is, is that you won't feel welcome in their home. There'll be a period where, and it's not, this isn't black and white, this isn't always, but this has been my professional experience and personal experience that there's a period where you'll, the narcissist in your child's life will act jovial and excited and happy to be with you so that it looks like your child is the problem. It looks like your child doesn't want to be there. You won't know that for months the narcissist has been talking smack about you and your family or you and your daughters or you and your sons or your mother or an aunt or an uncle. You won't know that your poor child's brain has been scrambled by a narcissist and has has caused the child's mind to be so confused about where to lay their loyalty. Do I lay the loyalty at, you know, towards my family or do I give complete loyalty to my wife or my husband who is always there for me? What do I do? You won't know that your child is struggling with coming to your house because on some level the narcissist has implanted them with the idea that your fa their family is wrong, that your child's family is wrong and out to get them. So imagine what it's like to be your child when for months, for weeks, for years, your child is being brainwashed. Literally, literally these implants, these seeds are being dropped into your child's mind. Your child is being told over and over and over by this man or this woman that they are there for your child. So we have this like rescuer situation. So it's like the narcissist has convinced your child that they are in fact your child's caretaker. Think about that dependent, codependent enmeshment in your child's mind for the narcissist. Now imagine you calling your child up and saying, would you like to come for macaroni on Sunday? Imagine the cognitive dissonance your child feels. Well, my wife or my husband thinks my family is against him or her. How can I say yes to my family? Think about the tension that wells up in your child when this question comes up. Think about the courage it takes for your child to say, babe, my mom and dad want us to go over there for dinner on Sunday. First of all, your child is most likely going to be punished for even asking the question. Your child will be, this will be an opportunity for the narcissist to play the victim, to reinforce the false narrative. Your family doesn't like me. You know, they don't like me. How could you ask me to go over there? What's wrong with you? You see, this is why I can't trust you. You didn't have the guts to tell your mother no because you're inept, because you're not a man, or because you're not a woman. You don't love me. If you love me, you would have told your father, no, you don't love me. You don't respect me. You, you expect me to have dinner with your family? I know they hate me. And if you love me, by the way, you wouldn't ask me. The punishment that occurs when your child asks the question, would you like to go to my mother and father's house for dinner? This is what happens because your child has been gaslit over and over and over. Your child thinks there's something wrong with them. You, this narcissist has taken all of their vulnerabilities and all of their stories, possibly about their childhood. And by the way, who doesn't have a sad story to talk about their childhood? Like we all have stories from childhood. 
And when you share your story with someone who is not a narcissist, it's that there's just space held for you. But a narcissist wants to know about your relationship with your mother. A narcissist wants to know about your relationship with your father so that they can string together a similar story. So now you have this false sense of connection with the narcissist. The narcissist's parents can be together. They could be dead. But the narcissist will come out with a story that sounds similar to your child's story so that your child begins to feel like she gets me or he gets me. That's how they begin this whole charade. And through the course of the relationship that your, the narcissist will have with your child, this story will get reinforced. Over time, this validation begins to turn to gaslighting where the narcissist starts to turn the story against your child. Well, you know, you have an addiction because your father rejected you, or, you know, you're insecure because your mother yelled at you. You're, you don't know really how to get along with people because, you know, your mother favored your sister. You don't really know how to make friends because you really didn't have a good relationship with your mother and your father. And so through all of this, right, you, your child won't even realize this. Through all of this, your child, the message your child is receiving is there's something wrong with me. There's something wrong with me. And that is why when your child asks a simple question like, do you want to go to my parents' house on Sunday? The punishment is so severe. It's an opportunity for the narcissist to punish your child for suggesting that they go to your house for Sunday, a Sunday meal. This causes your child to suffer such shame and such guilt, like what's wrong with me? How could I ask her to go to my mother's house? My mother doesn't like her. That is a complete false narrative. You might not have any feelings about this narcissist because you hardly know her. You only know the stories she gives you when she shows up for dinner. You just know that there's changes in your son that you don't like and your son is ghosting you and your son or your daughter is like hardly speaking to you anymore since they're in this relationship. So you really don't know this person. You just know that your child is exhibiting different behaviors. Your child is shutting down. There's something happening. So it's not that you don't like this person. You just don't know what's happening. This narcissist is projecting and your poor child is stuck in the middle trying to figure out how to get back into the good graces of this savior person, of this godlike creature who saved me when I first met them. This is insidious abuse. And if you have ever dealt with someone who has been abused this way, who has been gaslighted to the point where they are afraid to speak up for themselves, because if I speak up, the what is going to happen is going to be so severe and so ridiculous, I have to wonder whether or not it's worth it, number one. And number two, I'm just going to feel more guilty and like it's I'm wrong for asking the question anyway. So we go back to the scenario where your child is just gently asking, you know, do you want to go to my mom's house or my sister's house for dinner? And the narcissist takes that question and runs with it. How dare you ask me that? If you love me, you'd never ask me that. What's wrong with you? I don't know why I'm with you. I thought you loved me. If you loved me, you would have never asked me. What's happening in the heart space of your child and the mind of your child is your child is feeling responsible and guilty for what's coming out of the narcissist's mouth. What will happen inside your child's mind is I should have never asked what's wrong with me. The guilt, the shame that your child will feel. Your child be made to feel like they were disloyal to the narcissist. And that's what the narcissist wants. This is creating a dependency. Narcissists want something out of your child. They want to dominate. They want to control. They want citizenship. They want money. They want the house. They want the car. They want the prestige. They want to completely dominate whatever's happening in the relationship. Narcissists cannot have equal reciprocal relationships. It's just not possible. 
a narcissist can convince your child that there's something wrong with them because a narcissist is not going to struggle with lying like most people do. If you've ever met a narcissist, and I've met pretty phenomenal narcissists, pretty phenomenal actors, my children have been with narcissists who are incredible actresses and actors where you question yourself because their stories are so convincing. Understanding that narcissists want something. They want to gain something from you. You are a source of some type of supply. We can say it's narcissistic supply, absolutely. But in lots of the cases, narcissists want something tangible. They want your house. They want the deed to your house. They want your car. They want money. They want something tangible from you. Lots of times it does work. And if you are a parent, if you are a mom or you're a dad and you are observing this type of dynamic in your child, I can tell you that it is crippling to know that your child has been targeted by a narcissist. It is crippling to know that your child is under the narcissist's spell and they can't see it. It is crippling to know that your child is dealing with a narcissist that is putting them into debt and they don't care. Remember, a narcissist is not going to have the same emotional reaction as somebody who is moral and ethical. They don't have the anxiety and the tension and the guilt and the shame from abusing other people. You know, if you do something to someone and you're a healthy person and you use someone's credit card to buy an expensive gift for your mother without asking, or you create some story about why your mother needs this gift. If you're a healthy person, you own it. You say, I never should have done it and it was wrong and you mean it, you mean it. Like you're sorry. But if you're a narcissist, you don't care. You exploit that person's credit card because you want what you want. Maybe you're trying to impress your mother. You don't, maybe you're lying to your mother. Maybe you're telling your mother that, you know, you're living high on the hog and, and, and the narcissist is telling, telling the mother that she lives, you know, the life of Riley and she's, her husband makes all this money and he doesn't. And she has to use the credit card to lie to create a false narrative for the mother, to create a story for the mom. And so if you are the parent and you're observing this happen in the life of your child, your child is being manipulated from A to Z. And your child has been so gaslit and brainwashed that talking to you might be painful. And that's what the narcissist has done. And that's why I always, I say that this type of abuse is criminal because if you are annihilating someone's ability to make a choice and you are putting them into debt, that's assault. And narcissists find very clever ways to make it look like they're not doing anything wrong. They've actually, they're actually able to convince your child that what's wrong is your child. What's wrong is their insecurity. What's wrong is their paranoia. What's wrong is that, you know, they are, at their core inept, you know, they're not good sexually. There's something wrong with them sexually. They're not attractive. They're overweight. You know, they talk funny. They walk funny. They can't make friends. They're weird. You know, they're just weird. They're, they're awkward. These are the things a narcissist will say to your child to cause them to doubt whether or not they have their worthiness, whether or not they're worthy and it will incapacitate your child from the inside out to be able to defend themselves against the narcissist. And so they're weakened from the inside out, mom. They're weakened from the inside out, dad. And it's debilitating for a parent. It's, it's, it's so hopeless and it's such a desperate feeling when you're that parent and you're watching your child marry a narcissist or be manipulated by a narcissist and to watch them have children with a narcissist and to watch the narcissist turn the grandchildren against the family and to, for you to be on the outside of that experience and not know what to do with that is just such a desperate feeling. If you're feeling desperate, you're not alone. If you're feeling hopeless, you're not alone. This is like your child running off 
with a cult leader. This is what it feels like. Your child's brain has been brainwashed against the norm, against happy, against healthy, against balanced. And your child now has a complete emotional, psychological, physical dependency upon this narcissist who has manipulated your child's psyche. And now your child is damned if they do and damned if they don't. So if they're working for the narcissist, the narcissist will, will tell them they're not making enough money. If they, if she, if they're having intimate relations with the narcissist, the narcissist will tell them that your child is inept. If the, if the narcissist cheats on your child, the, the narcissist will blame your child for why they cheated. If the narcissist is lying to other people, which they are lying to other people, the narcissist will act like it's no big deal and will convince your child that that's normal, that they should never question what the narcissist has done. So if your child has married a narcissist, what you will notice is they spend more and more time with the narcissist. They will grow more and more distrusting of you and of their friends. You'll notice that your child might not even be able to answer any direct questions. You'll notice that your child looks into the eyes of the narcissist or looks into the eyes of their partner before they're even able to answer your question. So they're going to start looking at their partner for reassurance and for some sense that it's okay to answer the question. Your child is literally terrified of upsetting the narcissistic partner. Your child is, has been completely gaslit and understanding their emotions can help you learn to better deal with this situation. And it also puts you in a better position to be able to help your child once the spell has been broken. The best advice that I can give you if your child is dealing with this, if your family is dealing with this, is to keep the lines of communication open. A narcissist is going to hope that you push too far. A narcissist is going to hope that you say something negative about their partner. Try not to do that. When you're talking to your child, keep the communication open. Talk about other family, talk about other friends, remind them of the past, refrain from being judgmental. Try not to draw too much attention to this idea that you hardly ever see them anymore. Try not to draw attention to what you think might be the problem that they're dealing with a narcissist because that is going to create such cognitive dissonance inside your child's being. And the narcissist is an extremely good actor, actress. They are extremely talented. They are incredible liars. They are chameleons and they have spent a significant amount of time convincing your child that the only person that they can trust is them. And when you threaten that loyalty, your child's emotional stability is rocked. And your child will emotionally implode and all sorts of physical ailments will happen in your child. Also, your child may develop, um, nervousness, anxiety, uh, stomach issues, heart palpitations, headaches, physical symptoms can arise. So don't be surprised if your child begins to exhibit signs of anxiety or depression or some physical ailment begins to, um, occur in your child's life. That's not uncommon, but whatever you do, don't push against the experience. Try to keep the lines of, of communication open and just be there for your child in a non-judgmental way. Whatever you do, don't bring up terms like narcissism. Don't bring up terms like brainwashing. Don't bring up terms like gaslighting because what that's going to do is that's going to put your, your child into a, a mental state where they're going to have to choose in that moment, you or the person that they have become emotionally and psychologically dependent upon. And you don't want to put your child in that position. And it's really, really hard. Your, your gut and your instinct is to grab your child and run, but your child is locked into this narcissistic relationship, this dependent cult like relationship. You know, and it's sort of like the same thing. If you're trying to pull someone out of a cult, the more you persecute the cult, the more the person in the cult sees you as a threat. So you want to try to keep that in mind. If you can, and uh, we've done this ourselves, if you can get your child to consider 
coming to your house for a weekend. If you can get to your child to come on vacation with you, if you can get your child to meet you for lunch, right? And you're non-judgmental. If you can get your child to be in the company of family and friends and your child can feel like no one's on their case. Remember, the narcissist has gone through the trouble of convincing your child that your entire family is against them. So you don't want to prove the, the narcissist right. You want to, if anything, be completely neutral. Ask questions about, oh, how is your wife? Oh, how's your husband? If they say anything, you can't push up against it because you have to stay open so that your child is able to come to you and explore their inner dialogue, their inner narrative. And if the more your child feels like you're accepting of their situation, the less your child feels that you're threatened by their situation, when your child begins to come out of it, and God willing, they will, hopefully they will, hopefully they will. And that's what you have to hope for, that one day your child's going to figure it out. One day your child's going to open up the door and say, mom, I think something's wrong with my relationship. And when your child begins to start those conversations, you have to be open. Well, tell me what's going on. If you play devil's advocate, if you side with the narcissist, right? And you say things like, well, maybe he didn't mean that, or maybe she didn't mean that. Then that makes it easier for your child to tell you what they're really struggling with. Because the child has been brainwashed to think that you're against this person. And so even though every fiber in your being, every mommy fiber and every daddy fiber is going to want to scream at the top of the lungs, she's a narcissist or he's a narcissist, you can't. You have to allow your child to unfold and tell you what they're experiencing. And you have to wait because your child might open the door and this door might shut for another six months. The best thing that you can do is to make sure that you're getting support for what you're going through, because this is a very helpless and hopeless feeling as a parent to know that your child is being psychologically abused, financially abused, mentally and emotionally abused this way by a predator type personality. When you talk to them, try to remind them of the things that they used to enjoy. Try to remind them of the places that they used to explore. Talk about their loves, the things that they love to do. Talk about their talents. Try to remind them of the individual person that they were. Try to remind them of the time where they made you laugh. Try to remember the time they put somebody in their place. Try to help them recall the time in their lives prior to the narcissist. Let's say your son says to you that He's upset because your, his wife keeps threatening to leave him. And the reason that she's threatening to leave him is because she doesn't think that he's paying enough attention to her. Meanwhile, you know, from what you've seen that you're, there's no way that your son could spend any more time with a narcissist and she's threatening to leave him. Now, if you've studied narcissism long enough, you'll know that this is what a narcissist does. They will threaten you with abandonment to create a trauma bond. So they want your child to depend on them, see them as their savior, hook them really good, create a narrative that your child believes that they're not good enough, that there's something wrong with them. That's why gaslighting works. And your child will doubt their reality and doubt their competency on every level imaginable. And then if your child acts up or speaks up, the narcissist will go ahead and threaten to leave them. So this is to trigger attachment trauma, abandonment trauma. It's called a trauma bond. So you know that as a parent who's been studying narcissism because your child isn't locked inside a narcissistic relationship, you know that this is what the wife or the husband has done to your child. It's going to take everything that you've got to remain open. You have to play life coach at that point, which is tell me how you feel about that. How did it feel when she threatened to leave you? Why do you think she said that to you? What was your internal gut reaction to that response? 
What would you like to do about that response? How does it feel to be threatened, to be left? Because you asked a simple question about how she spent money or where he was this afternoon. How do you feel about being threatened with abandonment? You know, for answering or asking a simple question, how do you feel about that? You have to be very clever and you have to become an actor or an actress yourself because what you're trying to remember is that your child is dealing with a lot of fear and the narcissist has basically turned your child in on themselves. They don't trust their inner dialogue. They don't trust their feelings. They've been conditioned to fear speaking up. They think that there's something wrong with them. There's no outlet for these negative emotions, which is why they can exhibit signs of depression and anxiety and irritability. Um, why they spend less time with their friends and even you. They'll spend more time with the narcissist because the narcissist has convinced your child that they are the one who really cares about them. So you have to understand that when you're talking to your child, this is a very fragile situation. Your child absolutely believes that this narcissist is their everything. And any slight by you, any hint that you're against their partner, your child is going to defend because the narcissist has basically brainwashed them to do that, to choose them. So you have to really sit in your power and you really have to be open and understand that your child is like this closed flower bud and this, the, your child is closed because of fear. And when you speak to your child, you're trying to give your child the space to think for themselves. You don't want your child to feel retribution or disappointment on your end because that's what your child is dealing with at home. You have to be so unconditionally loving and accepting of this situation in a way that you've never been before. Because if you're not, and your child gets a hint that you're against the narcissist, they're going to shut down. Everything that the narcissist has, has brainwashed your child to believe can be reinforced by you having a negative, strong reaction to what the narcissist is doing. So the number one thing that you have to remember if your child has married a narcissist is to try not to panic and to keep the lines of communications open with your child. Use indirect communication with your child. Don't go head on. The narcissist is waiting for you to make a mistake. The narcissist is waiting for you to say something negative about them. And your child is very sensitive to negative things that you say. If you say something negative, then you're going to give your child a reason to avoid speaking to you. So remember that when you're speaking to your child, be happy, be open, act, act as if you are totally okay with your child's decision to be with this person, because that makes it easier. It feels when you act that way as a parent, it makes it feel like the door is open to come home. You want to give your child the sense that whatever they do is okay with you and that your door is always open. So you want to keep lines of communication open, use indirect communication, don't panic, and make sure that you get the help that you need and the support that you need. Also talk to your family and friends. Your family and friends need to know what you think is going on so that when they are speaking to them, if they bump into them in the street, they know to behave in a similar way. Be very accepting. I know it, sound, it sounds counterintuitive, but it really is the best way to approach this. And it's not very different than having your child be a part of a cult. Don't make it look obvious. Find reasons for your child to spend time away from the narcissist, like a holiday. They might not come, but just ask indirectly, hey, listen, we're going away and you know, there's a bridal shower out of town and you know, we were invited, we're gonna make a girl's night of it and we thought you'd love to come. You know, and we're gonna go out to dinner, we're gonna go see a show and we thought you'd have a great time, right? So it's not because you're trying to get them away from the narcissist, it's because they don't, you, don't want the, you don't want your child to know that, but you're going to create situations in which there's reasons for your child to be away from the narcissist. If you do this, there's a chance that once your child is away, they might remember what it was like to be not a part of the narcissist's reality. 
if there's a way that you can take your child to a place where cell phone reception is really poor or there's no internet connection, that would also help because you take your child away from the narcissist and the narcissist doesn't stop calling. The narcissist doesn't stop texting. And so if you can take your child to a cabin, if you can take your child on a vacation where, you know, you know that the internet service is going to be poor, that would be an awesome thing. So the less contact your child has with the narcissist, it could be, you know, um, it could be a very positive experience. The problem with that is that once the child goes back, your grown child goes back home to the narcissist, the child may experience punishment for not being um, able to keep communication going with the narcissist while they're away. So this gets sticky. This gets very complicated when your child is involved with a narcissist. Again, my heart goes out to you if that's your situation. I just hope that this information has been somewhat validating. I hope that you've taken some golden nuggets away from the information. And I hope that you have some idea or at least some tools about how to move forward until your child recognizes what's going on. In lots of the cases, narcissists will discard your child. In some of the cases, the narcissist will have an affair or the narcissist will tell so many ridiculous lies that your child will just not be able to ignore it anymore. And when that happens, when that happens, when your child gets to a point where they cannot ignore the red flags anymore, it's a beautiful and frightening moment all at the same time. Because what it means is that the power on the inside of your child has now become greater than the power outside of your child. So the hopelessness, the isolation and the pain, the negative energy within your child has now become greater than the fear of the narcissist. And at that point, your child will have to push back the narcissist. And that is when your child is going to need the most amount of support. Your child might need to move home for a while. Your child might need to go to an immigration attorney. Your child might need help, you know, finding the support to get to a divorce attorney. Your child might need to file some, might have to file a police report. But it's at that point where you want to give the message to your child that he or she is leading the boat. You're not making the decisions for your child. You are simply there to support them as they come out of this dysfunctional and abusive relationship. My name is Lisa A. Romano. I'm the Breakthrough Life Coach and Bestling Author. And if you'd like to listen to one of my books for free, all you have to do is click one of the links in the description box. And if you'd like to learn more about my online coaching program, the 12 Week Breakthrough Coaching Program, that can help you heal from abandonment trauma and that can help you heal from codependency, yep, you can click one of the links below. I now offer two versions of the program. I have an on-demand version of the program that we're offering for half off. And then we are also still holding our live sessions where my life coaches will moderate Facebook posts during the week and I will answer a live Q&A session on Saturday mornings while the class is live. You have two options to participate. Namaste, everybody. Until the next time. And don't forget to think. Bye for now. If you love this content, check out the next video. And don't forget to click the link below so you can take the codependency quiz. There are plenty of narcissists who are chameleons and who will treat people on the outside better than they do their own family. And this is to gain a source of narcissistic supply outside the house as well as keep the narcissistic supply going inside the house.